Hey everybody, it's Justin McDowell and I've got a deck profile for you for Versus System 2 PCG. This is going to be one that I designed for the Life's Too Short format. So your main character must have five health and every supporting character in your deck must have one health exactly. And I ended up choosing Bucky Barnes, AKA the Winter Soldier. And I chose him because Bucky D G A F. I ca I'm calling this deck Cannon in B because of his name, James Buchanan Barnes, and uh, because he's a total cannon in this game. Uh, this deck relies on Bucky to be the best there is at what he does, basically. All right, starting off with the main character, it's Bucky Barnes himself, AKA the Winter Soldier. He has Sniper, which is the key to this character, and he so he can range attack back row enemy characters even while they're protected. So pretty much for this whole game, you're going to be relying on Bucky to do his thing and not so much on the supporting characters to do attacking of their own. The idea is that you want Bucky to attack relentlessly your opponent's main character and seal the deal in five turns because he has that sniper action and he has range so if your opponent doesn't have range then they can't strike back at him which gives him the advantage his level up condition requires two xp missing an action when bucky gets wounded he gains an xp as he levels up he transforms into villains winter soldier at level two so he's starting out as a hero but he'll transform into the villain's Winter Soldier. And the thing about this uh, level up condition is that it's going to happen whether your opponent wants it or not. They got to wound you to win the game, and so you're just automatically going to level up once you get two wounds. The longer you can pull that, put that off, of course, the more advantage you gain, but uh, sooner or later you're going to transform into... Winter Soldier, level 2, so now he's a villain, and he's got 7 attack and 5 defense. So, again, it's going to allow him, he still has Sniper, so it's going to allow him to just keep on being the, the guy in your deck, the guy that you want, which is pretty, is pretty good, having 7 attack. You can, you can take on almost any main character, or at least many main characters, without even having additional plot twists in your hand with that high of an attack. Of course, he does have a drawback, which is his keyword power, the new Fist of Hydra. At the start of your main phase, choose an enemy player. They stun another character on your side. So your opponent gets to choose who you stun, and it's, it's just a stun. There's no strike involved. So they're probably gonna take out your most powerful supporting character and whittle you down one by one. But again, Winter Soldier DGAF. He is going to get the job done whether he's got friends helping him or not because of that sniper keyword. He also has the keyword power, the man on the bridge. When Captain America appears on your side, Winter Soldier transforms into hero Bucky Barnes level two. And this is what he looks like. So he's a hero and he's also AKA Winter Soldier. He still has sniper and he has six attack and eight defense so his attack goes down a little bit but his defense goes up substantially and his attack is still pretty good and he has range and he has sniper so it's it's he's just a really fun aggressive character to play with so keyword power i'm with you until the end of the line captain america pays one less power symbol to use his superpowers on your side so that gives you some free abilities to um, basically bring him back and, and uh, have him continue to protect Bucky in the back row. And he also has a, a drawback of his own, which is the superpower, Longing Rusted Furnace Daybreak. In the main phase, if you pay an intellect, well, rather, if your opponent pays an intellect and a skill, they can transform Bucky back into Villain's Winter Soldier level 2. So only enemy characters can use this power during their main phase. But... Uh, turning him back into Winter Soldier level 2 is sort of a mixed blessing for them because, again, you're, they're probably going to end up stunning the rest of your board pretty easily, but he's going to have that higher attack, and Winter Soldier will happily take you down with him. So, 
I had a lot of fun playing this deck. For the record, I won in a small tournament, small local tournament, so, you know, it's got, it's got something to it, I guess. Getting into the supporting characters, I have four Ant-Man. Uh, super power, or keyword power is going to have to take this to the shop. When Ant-Man appears, put two minus one, minus one counters on an enemy main character. So that allows Bucky to more easily take him down because he's got four attack initially. And even in the late game, it just gives him an advantage. So Ant-Man is one of the essentials. He's pretty good. Next we have Yellow Jacket. Uh, four copies of Yellow Jacket. He's in here to protect Bucky from being attacked with the classic keyword power shrink. When Yellow Jacket is attacked for the first time each turn, you may cancel the combat. So that requires your opponent to attack him twice to get at your character. So it gives you a little bit of early game advantage. If they're bringing out one character, their main character and their first supporting character, then they only have two characters with which to strike Yellow Jacket. And that leaves Bucky safe for another round. In practice, Yellow Jacket didn't do all that much and ended up kind of using him as resources points, but could come in handy. But you could also consider replacing him with someone else. I thought about trying Wasp at the end of the tournament, so that might be something that you could do. She has Shrink and then Regrow where she gets plus three, plus three during the second attack against her which is really hard to deal with, but she's also at three costs, so I don't know. It's up to you. And then at the two cost level, of course we have Grandmaster, four copies of that. It's main event time. Whenever a main character on your side attacks another main character, put two plus one plus one counters on the attacking main character. Obviously that's really good, and the whole point of Bucky is that he is going to be using his sniper power to attack you, the opponent's main character, so uh, you might as well get those counters on him as well. I haven't really gone over their attack and defense because most of the characters in this deck aren't here for attack and defense. They're here for their utility powers because uh, Bucky is going to be the one doing all the hard work, which is great. After that, we have four copies of Yondu. He's a pragmatist. As you recruit Yondu, choose heroes or villains. He appears with that team affiliation. When Yondu appears, if he has heroes, put plus one, plus one counter on each other character on your side. And if he chooses villains, then put a minus one, minus one counter on each character on an enemy side. So you can use him in two ways. One is to do just do the math. If, they, if your opponent has more characters on their board than you do, then you could put minus one counters on, on them. But if you have more characters out, then you could do the plus ones. Or if Bucky Barnes is gonna be more useful, he could get the plus ones. So there's a lot of ways you can do it. There's also the fact that there are gonna be hero and villain plot twists in this deck. So Yondu could make those plot twists available if you need a hero plot twist or a villain plot twist uh, when, the, when the going gets rough. Next we have three copies of Phil Coulson. I had four in here, but I eventually replaced him with another character. They need someone to avenge. At the start of your build phase, if Phil is in your KO pile, remove him from the game, then put a plus one, plus one counter on any number of characters on your side. So that's a great way. You can put Phil in front and encourage your enemy not to attack him and to attack someone else because they don't want to give him plus one counters. Or if you happen to be Winter Soldier level 2 and Phil's the only one out, then your opponent will, will have to choose Phil to be stunned and then you'll just lose. You'll lose Phil, but then you'll gain that counter, the plus one, plus one counter on the next turn. So I put three of Phil in my deck and I replaced him, the fourth copy, with Mandarin. This is one I had kind of hemmed and hawed about for a little while. I think the the chance of him becoming a very powerful character is pretty good. Basically, the, the thing that swung it for me was a build phase episode that Benjamin Brozine put out talking about the benefits of the Mandarin, and I thought it was worthwhile to put him in. So he's one of a kind. You may only have one of this card in your deck, and he has the keyword power, you'll never see me coming. 
When Mandarin is KO'd, remove him from the game. If you do, put a random card from behind the camera into your hand. So starting out, he's a 2 cost 4-4, four, four, which is not terrible. It's not super great either, but anytime you have these numbers higher than this number, then I always consider that a plus. So he's not he's not terrible to begin with, which is pretty nice. So he can he can do a little bit of damage before he gets KO'd. But then if he gets KO'd, you have two chances for him to become Trevor Slattery. He has the power, it's just a roll. Trevor can't appear or be played as a resource, and he's a zero attack, one defense. So basically he's useless. He sits in your hand. Um, if you want to know the full shtick of Mandarin, definitely listen to that build phase episode. I won't go through it here, but basically Trevor ain't great. Um, except for um, maybe if your opponent is playing Red Skull. But he also could become a zero cost, the Ten Rings. At the end of each turn, or if the Ten Rings would leave play, put it behind the camera. But he's a 10-10. Um, he's the real Mandarin, so he's a 10-10 zero cost character, and that could definitely help in in the game to to wrap it up if you get it. In my practice, I don't think I ever got, I think maybe I got one 10 rings in the, in all my testing, in my, in my little testing, but, um, I still think it's worth it in, for, for one card in your deck to have the potential to become that powerful. Uh, three cost, who do we have? None other than Captain America, of course. He has a leader. While Cap is team attacking, you choose who the defender strikes back against, and the superpower, I can do this all day for a uh, might. This combat, if Cap gets stunned, he doesn't get wounded, and when he gets stunned, recover him, then ready him. So he can make two attacks per turn, or he can defend twice per turn. He's pretty good if, if he can use that. And of course, when Captain America appears on your side, Winter Soldier transforms into hero, Bucky Barnes level two, and then once that happens, then um, Captain America pays one less power symbol to use his superpowers on your side. So then you can actually use that for free. Um, so basically he really can do this all day, which is pretty great. He's a three cost and a five attack for defense. Um, not great stats, but the fact that he can stay alive as long as he can is pretty good. So four of those in there, and obviously he's essential for transforming um, Winter Soldier into Bucky Barnes. Next, I have three copies of Mordo. Too many sorcerers. Enemy characters can't use superpowers. He's also a three cost, five, four uh, villain this time. And the nice thing about that is when he's out, then enemy, par pa enemy characters can't use Longing Rusted Furnace Daybreak to transform your Bucky Barnes into the Winter Soldier. So good for protecting against that superpower in addition to your opponent's other native superpowers. Then I have three Killmongers. His keyword power is I want the throne. When Killmonger appears, choose an enemy main character until Killmonger leaves play. That character loses its printed keywords and superpowers and Killmonger gains them. So not super great against someone like the Red Skull when he's passive, um, but definitely useful against most main characters. He can steal bulletproof from Black Panther, who's going to be a problem in the Life's Too Short format, which is pretty nice. And he's a five attack, five defense. So I got three of those in there. Then I have three Doctor Stranges. He is not in here for his astral projection, but he does have flight and eight defense. So if he is protecting Bucky Barnes, then that helps protect him, protect win the Winter Soldier from flyers and to protect from just other attackers who might not have eight attack on turn four, which is probably not going to be a lot of them. So Doctor Strange is mostly in there for flight and defense, not for his superpower. Likewise, Star-Lord is in as well for flight and defense. He has six defense, but he also has the power half celestial, Star-Lord can't be KO'd while a main character is face-up on your side. This power remains on while Star-Lord is face-down, but he can still get stunned and wounded. So as soon as Bucky 
goes face down, then Star-Lord will, will be out of there. But he definitely has some sticky staying power, and being a flight blocker is, is pretty useful, so that's why he is in there. At the five cost level, I have one of those new X-Files cards. I had to, of course, include one in here. Uh, well, I have two of them, I guess, because um, it was brand new and I, it was sort of flexing a little bit. Crycheck is, I believe it's pronounced Crycheck, but feel free to correct me in the comments. But Crycheck is in the aliens, the colony. I don't, I don't remember what they're called, but basically the X-Files aliens. He is a mercenary. So he can team attack with any other main character, which is nice because if they need to team up, they can. Although he doesn't, Krychek doesn't have Sniper. So again, Bucky Barnes, you want to be concentrating all firepower against their main character. But Krychek also has the power, we all have life in our hands. When Krychek appears, secretly choose a unique enemy supporting character. When Krychek is KO'd on an enemy turn, reveal the choice and wound that character. So that's useful for in basically KOing characters in the life's too short format because they all have one health. And um, I really hate the card life on the hellmouth. I hate playing against it. And so I've used Crycheck to get rid of back row relationship people who just don't wanna die. But I got two of him at the top slot. So I only have up to five cost in this deck because if it goes any longer than that, then basically you've done something wrong. All of these characters are in here to support Winter Soldier and Bucky Barnes and basic, in basically KOing the main character by turn five as fast as possible. So that's why I didn't include any other higher level supporting characters in this deck. Instead, I crammed it full of plot twists because, again, keeping Bucky alive or keeping the Winter Soldier alive is um, obviously going to give you an advantage. So most of these cards are in here to do something like that. So you can't talk about Life's Too Short without talking about Might Makes Right Gargoyle which is a combination you're probably going to run into. So I put Sokovia Accords in there to remove all plus one, plus one counters from each enemy character in the combat. I think that kind of speaks for itself. In the tournament that I played in, no one actually played Might Makes Right Gargoyle. So this didn't necessarily work for that, but it turned out that everyone else was playing, almost everyone else was playing photo decks, which was sort of weird but uh, also kind of interesting. And photo decks use a lot of plus one counters, and so this actually still came in handy for the, all those photo decks. So, four Sokovia Accords. Then we have four No You Move. Choose a character on your side in the combat to get plus zero, plus three this combat. At the end of combat, you may move an enemy character in the combat to its front or back row. The movement is less important although it can be useful, but of course the plus three for uh, Bucky Barnes, plus three defense is great for keeping him alive and up and ready to go on the next turn. So four defensive plot twists in No You Move. And those are my two hero plot twists. So you can play these when Bucky is out or of course when a, a hero supporting character is out. I've got four copies of two more grown its place combat, choose a defender on your side to get plus two attack this combat. If it gets KO'd this combat, draw two cards. So in a deck with lots of low cost characters, gaining the, that card advantage and, and getting more cards and more plot twists and more characters in your hand, it's going to make this deck go a lot further. So whether or not the plus two attack does anything, the thing that you want to do is to make sure that character gets KO'd so you can draw two cards. So even if you can't manage to strike back, if you're drawing two cards, that's the important thing. And that's a, a villain plot twist, so Winter Soldier can play that or any of the villain supporting characters. I thought you would be glad to see me. Choose a main character in the combat to get plus three, plus three this combat. I mean, sure, why not? Uh, again, 
You can use it as an offensive plot twist to make sure that Bucky's taking down the main character, or you can use a defensive plot twist to make sure that he's striking back or maybe even saving his butt. So four copies of I Thought You Would Be Glad to See Me. And surprise, surprise, he's a friend from work. So this is good for canceling the combat or giving Bucky a plus two, plus two. So it could be almost as good as I thought you would be glad to see me, or it could just cancel the combat outright. And since he has range, he's better off range attacking. So if, if, someone's, if someone who is good, I guess in this case, is attacking him, is melee attacking him, then he can cancel the combat, and then next turn he can come back and do a range attack where they won't be able to strike back. So he's a friend from work is always an essential plot twist, but especially in this deck. And finally, for plot twists, we have You're the Last One. If you have only one face-up character on your side, cancel the combat and end the current turn. So once again, this is this is fantastic, and it's especially good when... Winter Soldier is the only one out on the field. So if you're searching for that Captain America, then you're the last one potentially gives you up to four turns to find that find that card to transform him into Bucky Barnes. Otherwise, again, it gives him that turn advantage where he can um, come back with a range attack and maybe not get struck back against. Or in some cases, if it's the end of the game, he can make a, an attack and... Um, since he has turn advantage, he would win the game that way, which happened to me once, which is, is pretty great. So after that, we have locations. Oh wait, actually, there are no locations in this deck. Uh, haha, fooled you. Basically, there are very few superpowers in this deck in the first place. There is Doctor Strange's Astral Projection, but like I said, we're not using that power, and that's literally because there's no way for Bucky to, or Doctor Strange to use that power because there are no locations in the deck at all. There's also I Can Do This All Day, which requires a might, but again, since Bucky Barnes has the, gives Captain America the ability to use that for free, then I just didn't bother putting any locations in this deck. And of course, Bucky Barnes has a superpower, but it's something that your opponent would use. So again, no locations required for that. So since these are the only two cards that would use superpowers, I decided to just replace all locations with plot twists instead, which are focused on protecting Bucky and making sure that he doesn't get creamed. As far as issues with this deck, problems that you can expect to run into, in the Life's Too Short format, Black Panther was kind of tapped as being the big bad that you had to plan against. And since Bucky has range and the whole deck is built around him attacking main characters, then it is a challenge because of the bulletproof keyword that Black Panther has where ranged characters can't strike Black Panther even in melee combat. That can be a problem. There's some decent advantages which is that Black Panther doesn't have range, and so Bucky, even even when he's at his small four attack, two defense level, he can still do attacks against Black Panther without worrying about getting struck back against. And when you have Grandmaster out, then that gives Bucky the ability to grow pretty big, especially if you can manage to protect Grandmaster, which is admittedly very difficult in this deck. But as long as he can attack, even if he can't strike Black Panther, then that can help Bucky Barnes get pretty big to take out other threats while your other characters get to attack Black Panther instead. Uh, thankfully, I didn't run into any Black Panthers because almost everyone was playing photo decks, uh, which was sort of strange, but, you know, I'll take the win. <laughs> sure. And I mentioned earlier the other antidote to Black Panther is Killmonger, so basically taking away that bulletproof keyword and opening him up to Bucky being the uh, the big bad that that will take him out. And speaking of Killmonger, if your opponent plays Killmonger, then that can actually be a big problem for you, or especially a problem for Captain America, because then Cap can't use his superpower because there are no locations in this deck, 
and he can only use I can do this all day because of Bucky um, using I'm with you until the end of the line. So Killmonger can really put the <laughs> kibosh on that, um, which definitely happened to me and is very frustrating to deal with. But then you just have Bucky attack Killmonger, take him out, and then move, up, move on with your game. So the fun thing about this deck especially is that because Bucky is the one who's making all the attacks, you don't actually have to have a ton of supporting characters out on the field. And as long as your supporting characters are doing what they're doing, then you don't have to worry too much about keeping them alive for too long or protecting them or, or anything like that. There are so many really good two-cost characters in this deck and low-cost characters, and there, aren't, there are no high-cost characters beyond five-cost, that it's a lot of times it's, I was able to play super low-resource games. I think the most extreme game I won was putting only two resources out and winning by turn five because I just didn't need to... I either didn't have higher-cost characters in my hand or I didn't need to bring them out. I just kept bringing out the right two-cost character like Grandmaster, Mandarin, or Phil Coulson, or Yondu, or even one-cost characters like Ant-Man. Like, you don't, you don't need any much more than that as long as Bucky is able to use plot twists. And the fewer resources you put out, since, you're not, since you have to basically sacrifice cards for them, then that's more plot twists in your hand. And it's sort of like drawing cards. If you can maintain that card advantage, then you can maintain an advantage in the game. So that's my Winter Soldier deck. Let me know what you think. There's, I'm sure there's room for improvement. I didn't do a ton of testing. I didn't play a huge tournament where it attracted a lot of people, but I did still manage to get first place, and um, I'd be curious to hear your improvements. All right, that's it for me for now. So long. Addendum. So I was putting my cards away, and I realized that I had a marked card in my deck. Uh, that was not intentional, but it turns out that it is one of the Doctor Stranges. So for those of you counting at home, I was actually I actually had 61 cards in my deck instead of 60, and uh, so I had a, an infiltrator. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't sure what happened. I checked my other sleeves. I don't have any sleeves in this color. And so I thought it might have been, it's so close. I thought it might have been like a misprint somehow. It turns out that it's my friend Patrick's card. And uh, there's a possibility that I played with a 61 card deck when I was playing against Matt in the tournament. Um, it may have happened after that because we played another game after the tournament was over. Um, so I can't say for sure, but, um, just for those of you building this deck at home, uh, there's only two Doctor Stranges, not three, which I thought was weird when I was doing the profile, but, uh, I make a lot of changes to these things, so who knows. While I'm here, I also wanted to talk about this guy, Heimdall, because he is the guy who can search your deck for any character. And so he would potentially be useful for grabbing that Captain America out of your deck whenever uh, whenever you level up into Winter Soldier. Villains level two, and if you want to get quickly into Bucky Barnes hero level two, then Heimdall could come in handy. The problem is that he requires the use of an energy location. And as I talked before, there are no locations in this deck, so... Heimdall would be useful, useless as as is in this deck. Uh, I did. I thought long and hard about whether or not I wanted to incorporate some locations in this deck. But to me, the balance of either just waiting to find Captain America, or w hoping to get Heimdall and an energy location, and then do I put in the four wild locations, or do I put in eight? locations so that this combo can go off in a timely manner and then the fact is that Heimdall isn't going to last very long in any case because he's only got one defense and Bucky isn't in a place to protect him so I would be I would have to have 
be on turn four and have Heimdall and an energy um, in order to also recruit Captain America on the same turn. And again, I'm trying to win by turn five, so it's just not really worth it. And furthermore, Winter Soldier level two is just good. He's got seven attack, so he doesn't really... It's not like he has a huge drawback um, the way this deck is built to remain at Winter Soldier until the end of the game, uh, which is going to be turn five. So uh, I know some people will probably be asking questions about that, and so I wanted to make sure I got that in there as well. All right. Um, happy playing. I promise I won't cheat during the next one.